Hello everyone and welcome to prompt number 69. There is nothing special with that number, so let's just get into it. We have mirror and microphone. All right, mirror and microphone, here we go. So it took a little bit of thinking to think of an idea that I wanted to do, but the first one I went with, and the first one is the one that I ended up going with, was a kid who was pretending to sing into a microphone in their room, probably a play microphone, like a kid's toy. And behind them in the mirror in the room is reflecting the actual singer that they are pretending to be. So I guess the mirror is sort of reflecting what they are doing, I guess. The mirror is reflecting the fiction that the kid is pretending. So you have the mirror and the microphone and the posters. The kid is trying to be the singer sort of thing. But then I wanted to explore different ideas, of course. So my second idea was a singer getting ready for her, I guess, performance. And she's just not feeling it. Maybe she's just sad. She feels like she's forcing herself to do it or just something. So she's looking in the mirror at herself, just like, is this who I am? But in the end, I thought that was just a little too deep for me personally. I just, I don't know, it didn't really seem to connect with me. And the third idea I was going with was having this wall full of pictures and having someone walk by and see themselves in the mirror as if they are part of all these pictures. I really just wanted to put a lot of detail into a drawing where there's just a lot of pictures and a lot going on. I really like those drawings these days where it's just jam packed with details. And yes, before I get 100 comments, I say picture, not picture, because I'm from the country and I slur my words and it's gonna take a while for me to get rid of that one, so, oh well. So moving on to the actual drawing, like I said, I ended up going with the first idea because I just wanted to put a lot of detail into this little room and I thought it would be fun. I did like the idea the most out of the other three. And as I started to put this down on paper, I got the idea to do multiple drawings as I do because I just can't resist doing more. I didn't have the idea to do multiples in this set until I was penciling down the first drawing and I just thought it would be cute to do other versions because I don't know, I think, I think I just get a lot of ideas for one project and I can't resist doing all of them instead of settling for just one. I have a hard time deciding on things, I'm really indecisive and just doing all of them, why not? I'm an artist, I can do all of my ideas. It's not like I have such a tight deadline that I can't do more work. I like to draw, so I'm going to draw multiples. So if you didn't notice at this point, I deleted the footage of me inking, which you know, that's fine. Everyone thinks it's the most boring part. I think it's the most boring part. So we got to have more penciling footage and we get to focus on the coloring because what is there to say about inking? There's really not much to say about inking. So I don't know if this is such a big issue that I need to talk about it, but before anyone gets offended, yes, I made the boys room blue and then later on I make the girls room pink. I'm not saying girls have to like pink and boys have to like blue. In fact, my favorite colors are blue and I love all the shades of green and blue and I've never liked pink. I especially hate purple, you guys know that. It's just something I wanted to do. I wanted to theme the rooms to a color. It was really easy to do pink. I decided to make the girl blonde and that pink color really went with it really well. To be honest, I'm really not sure why I'm being so defensive about this. I just feel like there's a lot of rap gender and things that are set. Wow, don't tell me what to like and do. I'm not doing that. I guess I just wanted to say, I don't care what color you like and anyone can like any color. I just, I just did it. And moving on to talking about the rest of the drawing, shall we? Oh, I forgot I ended up giving him a pink guitar. So that makes up for that, right? Okay, seriously, I am moving on. I know it's really hard to tell, but I wanted the lamp to be a shape of a music note. And I don't know if that came across very well, but I don't think it's too bad, right? It's like a blue music note sitting on the bedside table. You can see it, right? Yes? Good, great, great. One detail I absolutely love about this room is that I gave the teddy bear on the floor the same glasses as the singer guy. So you have the glasses on the teddy bear, the guy in the mirror is wearing the glasses, and later I do put images of the guy on the posters on the wall. So you have lots of these images of this guy just to show that this little boy is the biggest fan. And he's also wearing a shirt with the guy's logo on it. I don't know why I made it a do not do sign. I, I don't know. I guess I just wanted something simple and I couldn't really think of anything. And that's always a cool sign, right? Not supposed to be Ghostbusters. So I hope that didn't go through as that. Something else I really liked about this is the dude's butt crack showing. I just thought it'd be funny if his pants were low and his butt crack was showing. Also because the kid is at home in his room, just having fun, he's in his underwear. 
I guess I just had a lot of fun with butts and underwear in this drawing. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but when I'm at home chilling out, I'm not wearing pants. Anyway, so that is that for this first drawing. Here we go with the second. So although I really like the concept of the first one and I really like the boy and the singer and everything in the first one, what can I say? I think this one might be my favorite out of the two because there are cats in it and I'm a crazy cat lady. I like cats. So I'll admit this one does not have a microphone, but I figure because the first one has both a microphone and a mirror that it gives this one a pass, right? At least one of the drawings has to have all of the prompts in it and I think that's okay. So with the second one, I just wanted to focus on the mirror, but in the end, I didn't actually do the same sort of concept. I did want to do the same thing with the first one where she is pretending to examine her cats. So she's pretending to be a veterinarian. And in the mirror, it's going to reflect her as an adult, as an actual veterinarian. But to be honest, I think I just filled the space up with too many cats too much of her, too much of a drawer, and in the end, the mirror didn't have enough room to really reflect the character as someone else. So I figured I have a mirror in here. I guess it doesn't really matter because the microphone isn't in here, so it, uh, that's already done. But who cares, whatever. In the end, I like this one the most. I just think the colors really come together. I just love all the cats everywhere. I, I just like this one more. I just like it more. I also just really like to give walls stripes and polka dots. I just think that is the cutest little wall background ever. I don't think I'll ever give my own walls wallpaper because it's a pain in the butt to apply. But heck, maybe one day I'll paint on some little polka dots. Might be kind of cute. So obviously my favorite part about this drawing is the cats. And my one favorite thing about the cats is that I got to make them look like they had been worked on by the girl. Because she is pretending to be a veterinarian, those poor cats are her little experiments. They get to be her fake victims and she is putting fake bandages on them and just having fun with her, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cats. And let's be honest, there's probably more than that. She's the daughter of a crazy cat lady and she has no friends and no other siblings. So her cats are her friends. And this is how you make another crazy cat lady. I really like the small detail of the pictures of cats in the mirror that I stuck in there into the frame. I thought those were really cute. Very simple, but a very cute detail. And it was just fun putting the different equipment spread about the room. We have the gauze on the bottom of the floor. We have the cat toy, the temperature thingy, and the heart reader thingamabob hanging out of the drawer. And then I think she's using the knee, uh, the knee reactor thingy to look at the cat's eye, so obviously it's not working, but you know what? She's a kid. She's playing pretend. It's all good. It's all fun. And of course, the finishing touches, I had to put some classic cat posters in the back. Well, one of them is the classic hang in there poster, and the other one is just a really zoomed in picture of a cat's face. And that is it for the second drawing. I hope you guys like this prompt. Here's a poll, which is your favorite? And I'll see you in the end card. Thank you all so much for joining. Your ideas were all over the place and I really loved it. I just wish I could include more of you into the end card, but I just can't have it be five minutes long. That would be crazy. But I am so excited that you guys are having so much fun with these. The two featured artists are Mary Does Art Stuff, who did a little clay figure of a cyclops and a swan and put it outside into a real setting. And gosh, I just love that. It was just so cute to see them in the elements. And D Wurgaz, your drawing of a cyclops that looks like a mountain and it has trees and stuff growing on it. It's just so cool. I loved it and the swans are enjoying the little lake it has in its hands that's flowing out of it. It's really pretty and I could see there being a story there so I really enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for joining and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Oh,